what do you first think of when I say the 60s? Do you think of hippies and flower power? What about Twiggy? Or the Beatles? Or the moon landing? All of these things are just the glamorous pop culture surface to the story I'm telling today. This is a story about the other side of the 60s coin, something that affected the lives of millions, rebellion and revolution. Throughout the decade, politics have been heating up with demonstrations against the Vietnam War in both the US and the UK. The biggest events of the civil rights movement were also occurring as well as a general increase in union-led industrial action. Though the picture I've painted thus far is one of the growth of progressive movements, this was not all-encompassing. There had not yet been a widespread women's liberation movement and the lives of most 60s women were relegated to housewifery or meagre rates of pay in comparison to their male counterparts. In fact, the Women's Employment Survey of 1968 found that women earned less than five shillings an hour, £4.40 in modern currency. It was in this political and social context that our rebels earned their title. The sewing machinists at the Ford Car Factory in Dagenham, Essex, all of whom were women, whose labour was essential in the construction of the car seats, in September 1967 had had their pay downgraded from level C to B on the new Ford grading system. This classified their work, which required training and examination as unskilled labour. To add insult to injury, they were only paid 85% of what their fellow male unskilled workers were. After months of asking and being refused to be graded back up, and a one-day walkout on the 29th of May, the real strike began on the 7th of June 1968, when 187 machinists, led by Rose Boland, Eileen Pullen, Gwen Davis and Sheila Douglas, demanded to be valued by their company. We can gauge the magnitude of the strike by reading the telegram sent to the Prime Minister Harold Wilson's office from the UK's Managing Director of Ford, W.M. Batty. These documents, kept at the National Archives, clearly illustrate the panic Batty felt, as he cites the production stoppage of 2,200 cars, the cancellation of £8 million worth of Ford Cortina orders, complete closure of UK factories, damaging of relationships with American dealers, and complete losses of £30 million overall. To me, this is a direct representation of how important the strike was, despite Wilson's acquiescence to Batty and utilisation of First Secretary of State Barbara Castle to negotiate an agreement where the machinists would not receive equal pay, nor be graded up, but instead receive 92% of what their male co-workers earned. I still view this as a story that must be told for its outright demonstration of how industrial power lies in the hands of the many, not the few. Only 367 of them, including the 180 women from the Halewood factory that joined the strike, were able to cause such impactful losses and real fear in the industry heads that barely recognise them otherwise. Nowadays we undervalue the importance of union action in a world post-Thatcher with the dawn of policies intended to remove faith in the effectiveness of unions, and of course the world of work looks very different to the way it looked in 1968. But the principle remains the same. In the spirit of these rebels, I'm choosing to point you towards your own workplace union. They're there to protect and advance your rights. The IWW, Industrial Workers of the World, serves the same purpose and is an explicitly radical organisation. I also encourage you to think about the ways that exploitation has evolved. In 2020, the UK gender pay gap was a frankly enraging 15.5%, and these statistics do not account for intersectional differences between race and non-binary gender identities. By pointing this out, I don't want to dampen the achievements of the Ford machinists, but rather bolster it. There is still a fight to be had. This reveals their true bravery. All in all, I want to finish this reflection on the story of the Dagenham strike with a quote from another document at the archives, a letter sent from an unnamed worker to the Prime Minister on the intentions of the strike. We are fighting a great fight, equal pay for women. We at Fords have started the ball rolling, our unions are backing us, funds are coming in, we're all out for battle. Fords is the beginning. Soon it will be every industry in Britain out because of us women at Fords.